uh, that there are some, now the question arises now, Allah says this is an Arabic Quran. So the Sahaba Tabi'un Taba Tabi'un, they read the Quran and they said, hold on a sec, not every single word is Arabic, what do we do? And so some of the early scholars, and the most famous amongst them is Imam al-Shafi'i. Imam al-Shafi'i said, anybody who says that there's a single word of non-Arabic in the Quran, he's a jahil. He doesn't, know what, he doesn't know what he's talking about. How can there be a non-Arabic word in the Quran when Allah says, inna anzalnahu Qur'anan Arabiyya. So Imam al-Shafi'i, his love for the Quran was so much, he said, I don't care. I'm not going to listen to any argument. Allah says Quran in Arabiya, end of story. Every single word has to be Arabic. Ya yeah, Imam al-Shafi'i, what do we do with these words that are found in other languages? They took them from the Arabs. <laughs> now, with all respect, I love Imam al-Shafi'i, he's a great scholar, but it doesn't, it doesn't quite work, right? I mean, it doesn't work that way. So later scholars said, no, 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 there's lots of non-Arabic words in the Quran. Lots of non-Arabic words, not a problem. And some of them, Imam al-Suyuti wrote a book, and over 250 words in this book uh, are basically uh, claimed to be of non-Arabic. Uh, that these are non-Arabic words. And he said this is a Farsi word, this is a, a Sundus is a Farsi word. There's a word in Sanskrit as well, it will come to me soon. Um, uh, basically ancient Urdu or Hindi is a word that's also in the Quran. So the, he, he brings all of these, there's words from Aramaic, uh, words from, uh, from uh, uh, Ethiopic, Istabraq. Uh, these are words from the Ethiopic language, they're not Arabic words. So how do we reconcile this? Uh, a great scholar by the name of Abu Ubaid al-Qasim ibn Salam, who died 230 or so Hijrah, Abu Ubaid al-Qasim ibn Salam, he said, both groups are right. How can both groups be right? Imam al-Shafi'i is right and his opponents are right. How can both groups be right? This is what you call a little bit of thinking. Calm down, look at both sides, both groups are right. How so? He said, yes, Allah says, inna anzalnahu Qur'anan Arabiya. This is one of their main evidences, this verse, right? That's where we're going into this tangent. For those of you who have never attended any of my lecture, I am guilty of going into lots of tangents. Unfortunately, my mind cannot think straight. So I'm trying to go here, but it goes here and there. Some of my students like this stuff, so alhamdulillah. And some of them get irritated. Uh, we'll, we'll, it, actually, I get more irritated than my students. But this is not a tangent. This is related to this verse. So... Excuse me this, this is not a tangent. Why? Because this is the main evidence. Inna anzalna Qur'anan Arabiya. This is what we're, verse we're talking about. So, Abu Ubaid al-Qasim salam he said, there is no contradiction, both of you guys are right. How can both of you guys be right? He said, and this is, as I said, intelligence and aql, he said, every language interacts with other languages. And it incorporates words from the other language into its own and substitutes the letters of those language with the letters of its own and changes the word to suit its own grammar so story becomes asatir afail ala wazni afail right story becomes asatir justice becomes qistas they make it arabic and the word becomes a fluent arabic word so much so that when an arab uses the word nobody thinks of its greek origin Nobody thinks of its Latin origin. Nobody thinks of its Aramaic origin. It is an Arabic word, even if it came 100 years ago, 200 years ago, from another language. And you know, this is the way languages work. Anybody who studied even the basics of language, you, you bring in words from other cultures, and then they become a part of your language. And so, they are Arabic words, even if they were taken from non-Arabic languages, now they are Arabic words. So Allah has spoken the truth. Inna anzalnahu Qur'anan Arabiya. Imam al-Shafi'i has said the truth that every word is Arabic even though his interpretation was a little bit incorrect. But he is true. Every single word is an Arabic word. Inna anzalnahu Qur'anan Arabiyan la'allakum ta'qilun. So that you may understand. You may understand what? Allah doesn't say you may understand what? So that you may understand dot 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 blank. You may understand what? It's not finished. The sentence is not complete. Why? It's because when you leave the sentence blank, you encompass all meanings. You don't need to finish. If you finish the sentence, you limit it. When you leave it blank, لَعَلَّكُمْ تَعْقِلُونَ So that you may understand everything. Everything. It doesn't need to be limited. And this also shows us that there is a reason why Allah chose the language of the Arabs and that is because his prophet is an Arab prophet 
and it is because the people of this Prophet, his immediate people, are an Arab people. And this tells us very frankly that the Arabic language is the most eloquent language. And we as Muslims, and I say this as a non-Arab of ethnicity, and I have no problem saying this, and I would go even farther to say, and this is the opinion of Imam Shafi'i and Imam Ibn Taymiyyah, and Adi, many scholars, they said this very clearly, that, and, uh, and many of these scholars were also non-Arabs. They said the Arabic language is the best language. Even as non-Arabs, we must acknowledge this. Now, the Arabic of today is not that language. So, the Arabs amongst you, with all respect, we're talking about Fusha, we're talking about Quranic Arabic, right? That language, as for modern Arabic, it is a different language altogether, right? It's not the language of, uh, of, of, of that uh, era. We're talking about that language. That language is the most eloquent language. We must believe this as a part of Aqidah. Imam Shafi'i said, this is our Aqidah. And Imam Ma some of the scholars are very strict. Imam Malik, if anybody spoke Farisi, now in those days, there was only one more language that the Muslims spoke. It was Farisi. There's only one language, it's classical Farsi. If anybody spoke Farsi in front of Imam Malik, you would have him kicked out of the Prophet's masjid, وسلم, because he was the Imam of the masjid. Anybody spoke Farsi, he goes, get out of here. This is, this is a place where we speak Arabic. Okay? Now, if we were to, I'm speaking in English now, Imam Shafi'i or Imam Malik were here, they'd be angry at me. But yani, th those were different times. And there's nothing wrong with uh, speaking another language, but they wanted to preserve uh, the language of the Prophet وسلم, and I say this as a non-Arab, yes, we should learn Arabic. It's not wajib to learn Arabic uh, to understand it, but subhanAllah, this is our religion. The Quran is our religion, the Sunnah is our religion, and learning Arabic is a big part of our religion. You cannot become a true student of the Quran until you learn Arabic. This is a simple fact. You cannot become a student of the Quran until you learn Arabic. And it it really irritates me sometimes when I hear somebody say, I have read 10 different translations of this verse, as if he's become now a great mufassir, when he's read 10 different English translations. Reading a translation is meaningless. You haven't, wallahi, you have not read the verse yet, much less the tafsir of the verse. You have not read the verse if you have to read the translation in order to understand, uh, in, uh, in order to understand uh, the Quran. So Allah says, I have revealed this kitab in mubin, in an Arabic language so that you can understand it. Now, if somebody were to say, it's not fair that the non-Arabs therefore don't understand the Quran. Allah is saying, I have revealed the Quran in Arabic in order that you understand. What do we do as a non-Arab? And what are non-Arabs supposed to do with the guidance in the Arabic language? The response to this is, one language had to have been chosen, logically, and even if Allah chose another language, then people of other languages would have said the same thing. So this is not a solid response to criticize its revelation in Arabic, number one. Number two, we say that Arabic is the most eloquent of all languages. And by the way, if you look at it, all of the languages that we know of that Allah revealed books in are Semitic languages. He revealed books in Hebrew, and He revealed books in Aramaic. And he probably revealed books in Syriac, the language of Dawud Islam. we don't know. But all of the languages that the books came down in are Semitic languages. Uh, Semitic is a family of languages, right? Hebrew, Aramaic, Syriac, Arabic, these are Semitic. And then you have the Indo-Aryan languages, and this is Latin, and from Latin we get, uh, Latin and Sanskrit are actually cousins. Uh, and then from Latin we get all of these Romance languages. It's a different family, completely. It has nothing to do with our branch of Arabic. Um, and if you study the differences between those two branches, you find a world of a difference. And those of you who are Arabs and have studied Nahu and Sarf back in your grade two and three, right? Once upon a time, uh, Nahu and Sarf is a blessing. I know you guys used to hate it. Believe me, I didn't love it as well. But it's a blessing. Why? Because it shows you the structure of a language. The structure, the precision of Nahu and Sarf. I'm going into a tangent here, but you don't find it in English grammar. You don't find it in Latin grammar, especially the science of sarf, where you take a three-letter verb, a three-letter word, and you add an alif or wow or a noon, you add a meme, and the structure is set. From one word, you can derive 250 words. Once you learn one word in the Arabic language, one word, all you have to learn is one three-letter verb, one three-letter root. Instantaneously, you can derive 250 at least, if you know sarf properly. And this is an amazing, amazing uh, language. It doesn't exist in English, it doesn't exist in any other language. So Allah is saying, I revealed it in Arabic so that you may, 
so that you may understand it. Uh, and the third point we'll say with this, if a non-Arab says this, we say, even if you don't understand its full beauty in Arabic, a translation will give you a portion of that beauty. It will give you a glimpse of it. And so, non-Muslims, we give them the translation of the Qur'an. There's no problem whatsoever. Some more strict Muslims say we should not give them translations of the Qur'an. The Prophet ﷺ wrote to the Emperor of Rome. And in that letter, he wrote a verse of the Qur'an. And when the Emperor received the verse, it was translated in front of him. And this is the first time in history that the Qur'an was translated into Latin in the lifetime of the Prophet ﷺ. How can anybody say this is not allowed? In the lifetime of the Prophet ﷺ, and he knows it's going to be translated. The emperor of Rome did not speak Arabic. And the Prophet wrote him in Arabic. And so it is our duty to translate the Quran into other languages. The Prophet had no problem doing it. It's not the Quran anymore, but the glimpse of beauty will remain. And therefore, the Quran will remain. But the other languages are permissible. Allah says after this. Uh, that we have sent this Qur'an down in anzalnahu Qur'anan Arabiya la'alaykum ta'aqilun One of the reasons why Allah is beginning the surah Yes, why is Allah beginning the surah? By mentioning we have revealed this Qur'an to you One of the reasons why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is mentioning this Is to remind the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Of the favors that he has upon him The favors that Allah has given him And this is a standard motif of the Qur'an your Lord has not left you, nor has He abandoned you. Didn't we find you as an orphan and we took care of you? Allah is reminding the favors that He has done to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And why does He do this? To re uh, this is human nature. That when you're down, what what do you need? You need somebody to cheer you up, right? When you're spiritually down. When you're going through a depression mode or something that's depressing, what happens? Somebody's come, what happens when your loved ones come? It's all right, you know, this, that. They cheer you up. They tell you something positive. So Allah Azza wa Jal is telling the greatest positive thing. That we have revealed this Qur'an to you, anzalnahu, one person. We have revealed this Qur'an to you. Thank Allah for this. This is the greatest blessing you can have. So we have revealed it in Arabic so that you may uh, understand it. The last verse that we'll do and then we'll open the floor for question and answer inshaAllah. نَحْنُ نَقُصُّ عَلَيْكَ أَحْسَنَ الْقَصَصِ نَحْنُ نَقُصُّ عَلَيْكَ نَحْنُ We have already mentioned that the plural occurs because of Allah and the angels. نَقُصُّ عَلَيْكَ We recite to you the stories. What stories? أَحْسَنَ الْقَصَصِ The best of all stories. Now, قصة. Uh, what is a قصة? قصة, actually the word قصة, comes from qassa and qassa means to follow the footsteps in the, sta in the sand when you, uh, the Bedouins when they, f when they found somebody's footsteps they would follow them in order to catch up to that person in order to get to that person and that's why Allah says in the Quran about, uh, about um, Musa alayhi salam فَارْتَدَّ عَلَىٰ آثَارِهِمَا قَصَصَ there's no story involved here qassa here means what? Musa and Yusha, they followed their own qasasa. They followed their own footsteps back, right? Qasas here means to follow the footsteps till you meet the person. So why is a story come from following the footsteps? Pretty obvious. Why? Somebody. Hmm? Something handed down, good attempt, close, not quite. You didn't quite get the prize. Stories are handed down. That's close, but even closer. The linkage of it. You will su no. I'm talking about why is a qissa called a qissa? Not for not. Pro I'm talking. About why is a story called a qissa? It's a linguistic question. Beginning and ending. Someone has to say it. Told again and again, similar stuff, but we're not getting to it. Chronological. What is a qissa? You are walking in their footsteps. 
Like what is qassameen? I said to walk in somebody's footsteps, to follow them.